Welcome. My name is Andrew John Mitchell, Artistic Director here at the Milburn Stone Theatre, and welcome to the next episode of Curtain Call. Today we're going to talk about our November-December 2019 production of Disney's Hunchback of Notre Dame. My name is Andrew John Mitchell, and I'm here with Kara Clace. Kara, who is playing Esmeralda in MSD's production of Hunchback of Notre Dame. Kara, now this is your first Milburn Stone Theater production. So it first is, off, yep. congratulations. Thank you. Uh, where might have MST audiences seen you perform in the past? Well, they would have seen me perform in Wilmington, Delaware. I live in Delaware. So okay. I've performed at the Wilmington Drama League twice. I performed in their production of Cabaret um, a few years back, and then um, just this past spring, I played Aida in Aida. Excellent. Mm -hmm. I, actually, I did see that production of Cabaret. You were great. Oh, thank you. Um, so you're playing Esmeralda, who is a you know free-spirited gypsy, mm -hmm. and also really the center of our story in many ways. Uh, please tell me a little bit about your preparation for the role, and um, uh, how do you see the role of Esmeralda? Well, I think in terms of um, Hunchback, the stage musical, mm -hmm. in order to be really prepared for it, you have to do a little bit of homework into um, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, the actual book, because um, the stage musical run is aligned more closely with Victor Hugo's book, more mm -hmm. so than the Disney movie that a lot of people are familiar with. So I actually love Victor Hugo's book. I've, I've read it a couple of times. So I sort of revisited that um, to remind myself of what the roots of the story are. And also just really studying um, the musical itself and, and knowing background about the musical. It, it, it was never produced on Broadway, but um, looking sort of into the history of the production and like how it's changed and, and what uh, the creators were going for, I think is a vital part of preparing for um, Hunchback in general, not just the role of Esmeralda. Now, when it comes to Esmeralda, um, she's always been one of my favorite uh, Disney characters. So for me, that wasn't um, too hard of a task. But um, just really going through um, the script, the book, the musical, and, and, and seeing what her character arc is and, and um, understanding uh, why she does what she does and, and um, where she fits in the story of the Hunchback of Notre Dame overall. So thinking to myself, what do I want to communicate to the audience? What message do I want to give to them via this character? Um, so Esmeralda is a very unique and demanding role. We kind of mm -hmm. talked about this a second ago, but what's proven to you to be the most um, difficult part about preparing for Esmeralda, but also alternatively, what's been the most rewarding part? I think the hardest part for me is uh, when it comes to me as, as Kara mm -hmm. and Esmeralda the character, there are a couple of uh, personality differences. So I think I'm a little bit more um, skeptical than Esmeralda, where Esmeralda is a very um, open person and she sees um, the best in people, even when a lot of uh, people don't. Um, so trying to be in touch and in tune with that side of her character, I think, was the most challenging for me so that I would be able to portray it um, genuinely on stage. The most rewarding Probably the same thing. I mean, going through Esmeralda's journey and um, getting to explore that adventurous side. She's, she's definitely more adventurous than me. Um, getting to pretend to be that person and actually understanding her character. Not making a caricature, but understanding the character of Esmeralda as a gypsy, you know, in France. Um, I, I think it's been a fun process for me. So. Excellent. 
So uh, Esmeralda does get a couple great songs within Hunchback, mm -hmm. some pretty iconic songs too, and compared to the canon of uh, what Alan Menken has written. What's your favorite song that you get to sing? Actually, it's a song that I get to sing with uh, Phoebus. It's called Someday. And it's very interesting, the background of that song, because in the Disney movie, uh, it was between God Help the Outcast and Someday. It was going to be one or the other, but they wanted something that was a little softer, so they went with God Help the Outcast. But um, Someday has always been one of my favorite songs. It's still in the Disney movie's credits. Mm -hmm. um, I just I think it's just so beautiful, and it's in the show. It kind of serves as like that little point of light in a very dark moment of the plot. So it, I just love the song. So why should audiences come out and see Hunchback here at the Melbourne Stone Theater? I think people should should go see Hunchback because it's not the story they're expecting. So as I said before, um, a lot of people are familiar with the Disney rendition of The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Um, some may not be very familiar with the book or even the stage musical per se. And um, I think there'll be surprises. There'll be surprises for the audience um, that they didn't expect, especially those who aren't familiar with the differences between the stage musical and the movie. And also, I just think the message of The Hunchback of Notre Dame is very timely um, in this day and age, and um, especially in a time where we are becoming more open to people with differences and accepting things that maybe socially wasn't acceptable before. So I think it's a timely message, and I think the audience will be in for a treat. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Here I am with Mr. Dale Martin Jr. Mr. Mr. <laughs> of course, who plays Quasimodo in our production of Hunchback of Notre Dame. Now, Dale, mm -hmm. this is not your first trip across our boards here at the Melbourne Stone Theater, is it? Nope. Please tell our audience here uh, what show you've done here in the past, or shows I should say, and what roles you've played. Okay, so the very first thing I did was in The Producers. I was Scott the choreographer, mm -hmm. so that was fun. Um, especially the tights, me and tights, that's always fun. And then I went on to do Annie, and I was Rooster, Rooster Hannigan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah, so I danced, which that's another fun thing yeah, for me. Of course. Yeah, so stretching. <laughs> okay, so you are playing Quasimodo in yeah. Hunchback of Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. A truly transformational theatrical role in really almost every sense of the word. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about your process as you took on the role and uh, what you've learned in the role so far. A lot of it has to do with uh, the aspects of his abnormalities. So whereas, like for example, I played Jekyll and Hyde at one point and that was pretty much you could change a voice, you could do a little bit of expression, but with this you actually have um, thought process where he goes into dream states, where he's talking to inanimate objects, where he's talking as a normal human being, and then he goes into his actual phys physical uh, imperfections where he's actually hard of hearing because of the bells, and because of his deformities he has speech impediments. So to transition those two things was a real challenge as far as that went, but it's been a great time doing it. So. Excellent. Yeah. So Quasimodo does get to sing some pretty iconic songs in this show. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us your favorite song to sing? I would say Out There, but everybody says Out no, There. That's all right. So that's answer, though. my actual favorite would be Heaven's Light. Okay. Um, I think that brings about a little bit more of what Quasimodo is. It's more of a sensitivity thing. Um, it brings more of a humani humanistic feeling towards the character. Uh, out There is more of his joy and, and just for a character that's perceived as monster, it makes him more human. And I think that's a lot of what the story brings about, so. Excellent. Yep. 
So Quasimodo is a very physically demanding role. Yeah. There's a lot of movement, there's a lot of you know, gestures that have to be made. Mm -hmm. What's been pretty much your most rewarding part of that and also what's also been the most physically demanding part about that role? Uh, the most rewarding is uh, for me singing the music and being able to express the character. It's just, he's such an endearing character. Like you, you can't really hate him even though he's a monster. It's just that natural thing. And the cartoon animation does a really good job of bringing the more humanistic qualities because he is more human. In this, he actually has those imperfections and flaws that makes it kind of a little more of a stretch, which is making it a challenge. So I did enjoy that. Um, the challenging part for me is just really, this has a lot of ensemble pieces that get pieced in and out of sequences, and there's a lot of different people that are involved. And uh, so everybody's really important in this, and you miss something and you're not flowing right that day, it could be a really tough spot for you. So that's the biggest challenge on this for me. Final question. Uh-oh. Why should audiences come out to see Hunchback? Um, the story, it's, it's a really endearing story. Um, it's the good and bad in all of us, and somewhere in between you find the light. So uh, that's where I'm at with it. But also the music, mm. it's an amazing score. Uh, this will probably be one of the ones that I would drive down here just to be in the ensemble, for sure. So that's what I have to say about that one. Excellent. Yep. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks. <laughs> this child is my cost to bear. I may not have saved my brother. I'm here right now with Mr. Ed Elder. Ed Elder is playing Frollo in Hunchback of Notre Dame here at the Milburn Stone Theater. Ed, this is not your first trip across our boards, as I like to say. <laughs> uh, please uh, let our audience know, or how about remind our audience about the last role you played here at the Milburn Stone Theater. I, uh, actually, well, the first production I was in was uh, Susical. I was mm -hmm. General Gingish Schmitz. And then uh, last Christmas, I played Drake in Annie. So Ed, you're playing Archdeacon Claude Frollo in Hunchback. Uh, playing a villain is often a fun and rewarding challenge. Tell me a little bit about your process uh, for the role, and also, how do you see Frollo? Is he a villain? Well, through the process, I grew up watching the animated version. I remember seeing the movie theater, and then years ago to MGM Studios when they had the live production, it was one of my favorite shows. And then watching some other productions of it online, and then also reading the actual story. Interesting how he, he's so different in the, anim in the animated version than he is in the original story. There's more, he's more evil in the, the animated adaptation. And I'm just, after reading the story, trying to bring more of a human quality to him that he's not as evil as he is, nor everybody thinks he is. He's more or less, he's flawed, he's a flawed human. Um, and it's just through thinking that he's the, what he thinks is always right. Uh, so, you know, Hunchback's filled with these, you know, wonderful stories and wonderful songs. Do you have a favorite song in the show? I would say, uh, singing-wise or sure. performing-wise. It's up to you. you. It's either one of yours or it could be anybody else's, too. Um, I would probably say, hearing singing-wise, would definitely be, would be Hellfire. Mm -hmm. To me, that's one of the most iconic villain songs that, that it's ever been in any, anything with Disney. I mean, before with liking, I thought Pre Prepared was the best song. Then with Hunchback, it's like, no, that Hellfire blew it out of the water. And it's just incredible in that song to see him slowly descend more into the madness that's occurring because of the lust and what he feels for Esmeralda. Otherwise, the other, one of the other songs that I enjoy he hearing performing is actually um, God Help the Outcast. Mm. I, Cara, who's playing her Esmeralda, she does a fantastic version of it. And the ensemble sounds fantastic. And then there's also a couple, a couple of the congregants that actually do something, which I can't give away, you have to see the, you have to see the production. Mm -hmm. But they do something during that song which I think is very beautiful. That kind of leads me into my next question for you. Without giving away any spoilers, mm -hmm. do you have a favorite moment in the show you'd like to share? Well, let's see. Oh, there, there, are, there are quite a lot. Um, Anytime, truthfully, I get, I get the chance to share the stage with Quasimodo or Esmeralda, those two, having the chance to work with Dale and Cara, give me, 
they give me so much energy to work off of. And it's just a pleasure to work with them. Okay, final question here. Right. Why should audiences come out to see Hunchback of Notre Dame? Well, it's, it's, a, beautiful, it's a beautiful story. It's, I do tell people, it's, even though it is Disney's Hunchback of Notre Dame, it's not necessarily the animated adaptation. This is a much darker version. There's no, none of the happy gargoyles, <laughs> as, as everyone where, where in the animated version. Uh, but it's, it's also the music. Like I said, mm -hmm. having the ch opportunity to sing Latin is, is a beautiful experience. And with Stephen Schwartz and Alan Menken, I mean, the incredible people, music to work with. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. Suddenly an angel has smiled at me and touched my face without a trace of fright. I dare to dream that she might even care for me. And as I ring the bells tonight, my cold dark tower seems so bright. I swear it must be. 